Hi, friends. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. It helps so much. It helps us get the word out. It helps the channel grow. Benny, where can they find us on social media? Yeah, check us out. We're on we're Ray Benny Sports. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Also, check us out on Reddit and Discord and leave us a rating on your favorite podcast provider. We got some CFL talk. We got some Winnipeg Jet talk, a little bit of NHL talk, but let's start off with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Big news, signing a huge chip less than two weeks after the Grey Cup. Uh, Willie Jefferson signed on for another year. What's the biggest takeaway that you get from this signing, man? Yeah, this is awesome. I'm not surprised it got done so quick because both sides really wanted it. We were just waiting for Kyle Walters basically to sign. But the uh, biggest takeaway is just how much this guy loves Winnipeg. You know, and he likes the culture that the Bombers have built. Like listening to his press conference, he was nothing but selling the city, selling the CFL, you know, and that he's learned a lot coming from where he started. He came here ready to leave here as soon as he got an NFL offer. Now he's like, I'm glad it never happened. I'm glad I stuck here and all that kind of stuff. So it's great to see he's an ambassador, not only for the Bombers, but also for the league and for young guys coming in. Um, so, yeah, my takeaway is that he just he just loves being here and he loves being in the CFL. Yeah, absolutely. He's a huge asset from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Like for his salary, he makes way more money for the team. Uh, it's oh, crazy. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, my biggest take is that they have the stick that stirs this team. Yeah. When you need a big play on defense, you can almost guarantee that Willie Jefferson is either going to make that play or he's going to create that play. You know, yeah. at any time you see him around it, either he's causing a disruption at the line, not even blocking it, getting his hands up, or he's getting a sack, or he's covering and he's getting an interception and bring it for a pick six. Anytime you need that big play, he's there. You know, he's that leader also that breaks the huddle. When they come out, they warm up before they go back into the tunnel, go back to the dressing room, he breaks that huddle. When they come out after the intros, he breaks that huddle. So he's that leader, you know, like James West was, like uh, Jerron Bolden was, like Odell Woodless was with Swaggerville. Uh, I don't know, maybe who was before Willie Jefferson, Mo Leggett? Yeah, Mo Leggett was pretty good for that kind of yeah. stuff. So, yeah, he's that dude. Yeah, you know, I love it. Go ahead. No, I, I just like a quote from Ed Tate. I was reading his article and he was talking about Willie Jefferson. It kind of leads to what you were kind of saying there. It's like, he goes, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers dominant defensive end has this aura about him, a warning, warming energy that pulls you in like a tractor beam through his mega, megawatt smile and his genuineness. I'm like, wow, yeah, that, that's basically Willie to a T right there, right? And he was even talking about what you were saying. He's like, you better block me. And you better put two guys on me. And if you're not going to, or if you're going to throw my weight, I'm still going to knock that down, even if I'm being blocked kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah awesome to have him back. And like you said, he mentioned about this thing that we've built, the yeah. organization and the players, not the fans when I say we've. And he's truly a piece of what they have built. Oh, you know, yeah. there's, there's guys who have been there longer and who are also like a vital part of the core, like Jake Thomas, Brandon Alexander, Pat Newfeld. Uh, Drew Wolotarski, but you're talking about he was the next guy that put those guys to the next level. Yeah. You can see oh, at yeah. camp when you sit in the stands that he is a leader from camp, encouraging young guys on. Like there was a guy who I fell in love with because he was under Willie Jefferson's wing. He never made the team. I was totally wrong about that prediction, <laughs> but I bought into Willie Jefferson and how he supported that young kid so much. Yeah. Like that's the effect that he has on these guys. So, man, uh, that's what I, that's my big takeaway. Well, four years here, four great cup appearances, right? I mean, it all started. He kind of brought that stuff together. And yeah. he's a big player to have there because, yeah, he brings that team together. And even in this press conference, you're, you're, I mean, you just lost the great cup a couple weeks ago, but he's still beaming. He's still that guy um, that he's always always is. And, you know, it seems like nothing can get him down kind of thing. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And it's a good first piece to have because the guys will see it. And he's like, okay, Willie's, Willie's back in. You know, uh, I was close to retirement, but you know what? Let's give it one more try kind of thing. So yeah. hopefully more signings in the next little bit. Or even guys who aren't about to retire and yeah. could test free agency. You know, they see Willie staying and who knows what numbers that he's taking. But, you know, he's probably part of that culture of contributing to the team in every which way. And they see that and they'll buy in. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, it like, sounds like he's staying here as long as the Bombers kind of want him. And it's, uh, he even kind of said himself, as long as I can still play and I'm still playing at a high level, I'm going to keep playing, right? So, yeah, 
Sounds like he'll be here for a long time as long as the Bombers keep wanting him back. I wish it was a two-year deal at least, but these one-year deals are pain in the butt. Let's wave the CFL. <laughs> Do you think Brady Olivero will uh, tip his dip his toes in the free agent waters? Yes, I I, I think so. Just the just in, unless the Bombers knock his socks up, right? As far as like he had said, he wants to try the NFL. So that could be a bit before that even happens, right? You know, wait until January, February, once the season kind of ends for NFL. So that could be a bit, and that could be after free agency even starts um, yeah. here. Cause it starts what second week of February, usually. So February 13th this year. Yeah. Free, unless free the agency? Bom- yeah. Yeah. February 13th. Yeah. So as, unless the bombers knock his socks off with a crazy deal, I could see him kind of looking around just to kind of see what he's probably worth out there. Yeah. I think he knows what he's worth. He's he's seen his big bro Andrew Harris, and I think there's more benefits to him staying in Winnipeg. I don't think he'll I don't think he'll even touch the free agent market at all. Uh, I think him staying at home. I think he's passionate about this team. You know, he talks about Milt. Yo, this is my favorite dude growing up, uh, and being in that stadium that he's playing right now. Uh, I I think he he won't. I don't think he'll touch the market. We'll Plus, yeah, he's big in uh, Winnipeg. Like he was at Sturgeon Heights Collegiate today uh, for a rock paper scissors championship kind of thing. So he was there as well uh, with other bomber players. So he's doing stuff already around the community. Yeah, I, I, you know what? He could leave such a legacy behind here by sticking around here for his whole career, pretty much. And I get the yeah. NFL. If you can get to the NFL, sure, yeah, do it. But in the CFL, man, you got something good here, and you could be legendary status if you stick around here, right? absolutely close to home and i'm sure like the side hustle and whatever gigs that there are sponsorships you know they're available to him as well yeah so oh yeah shoot. of course i'm being greedy as a winnipeg fan yeah you just want him to stay <laughs> for sure i yeah. do i'm no fool uh scott milanovich hiring uh in hamilton kind of expected is this the right move for hamilton yeah, I think so. I mean, it kind of continuity a bit from last year, right? I know he was just there last year and just kind of took over the OC role halfway through. Um, but he, the guy's got a lot of experience. Uh, he's proven winner so far in the CFL. Uh, he's good with QBs, which Hamilton's going to need right now, depending on what they do, if they keep Bo Levi or if they go to Schultz or Powell or even go after Drew Brown. Um, but yeah, he's won a great cup in the league, so he's got the experience. And it looks like they got a pretty good front office there with Ed Hervey as GM. And then uh, Steinauer now in president of uh, football operations only. So they kind of split up the roles a little bit. Um, you know, so that maybe that'll help Steinauer because he was taking on too much and it kind of showed on the field. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a good move. Absolutely. It's a great move. Uh, you know, the next move is to release Bo Levi Mitchell, you know, so he can pull a Henry Burris, go to Ottawa and take them to the Grey Cup. <laughs> I doubt it. But I'd be shocked if he remains with the Thai Cats. You know, it already sounds like maybe him and Milanovic aren't the the perfect pair. Um, yeah, well, yeah, he has a feel for the room. He has a respect across the league. He's great with QBs, like you mentioned. Uh, maybe he even helps to bring in three last names. Yeah. Tom Bethel Thompson might I come keep, back to the league. I keep forgetting that he had said he wanted to come back. So, so yeah, there's another option on the table for some teams. Yeah, I think he'd be great with uh, Scott Milanovic. Yeah. Holy cow. Mm. Well, he did say, Milanovic said he, he they want to limit turnovers and all that stuff from the QB position, right? And uh, Bo Levi was not good at that this year. So, maybe, maybe, but, you know, knowing, knowing Hamilton, I mean, they hung on to Dane Evans for as long as possible and then traded him, right? So, I could see them doing that to Bo Levi as well. Hang on, wait for someone maybe to make an offer and make a trade instead of just releasing the guy straight out. No, this Ed Hervey days, though. Yeah, that's true. And so I, I know we're Ed- still there, though, so you never know. I don't think Ed Hervey would take that job with like, yo, Steinhauer, you can tell me yes and no on every one of my moves. But was no he there? Way. Was he there at all last year or no? Or is he brand Hervey? new? Ed Hervey, yeah. No, Ed Hervey com- was No with... capacity last year? He was in Edmonton last, wasn't he? Yes. No. Was he not last year though, right? The other receivers in Edmonton right now, G. Roy Jerry, Simons. Yeah, but he's uh, OC, isn't he? No, G. Roy Simons in the front office. Oh, right. Assistant, right? He's yeah, assistant yeah. GM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ed Hervey oh, used to be in Edmonton. And then he then got... Did he go to BC after that? Maybe. Yeah, something like that. Google will help you one day. One day. Not right now. Where's a good landing spot for McLeod Bethel Thompson now we mentioned him, other than Hamilton? Ooh. Any thoughts? I don't know. Yeah. Mentioned his name, might as well talk about that dude. Back to Ottawa? I mean, unless they're sticking with Crum or Mazzoli. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, we're we're in the West, really. Just Calgary, really has Montreal questions at quarterback. Locked in with Fajardo. We'll Fajardo's talk about that in a second. In, yeah. Ain't no going to Toronto. So it's yeah, Ottawa, Ottawa or Hamilton, really. Yeah, but Ottawa is probably your best bet. Shoot. Hey, there's a good segue. Talking about Ottawa, Tommy Condell just signed as the Red Blacks' offensive coordinator. Good move. Ah, for me, it really depends on who they get at quarterback. He hasn't really won a Grey Cup as a coordinator. Yeah. Like he knows the game well, uh, and with an experienced QB, maybe that'll get it done. Like he almost got it done in 2019 uh, with who knows what quarterback at which time, who was hot, who was not, who was injured, and who can go. But maybe with him and McLeod Bethel Thompson, that'd be a good combination. Like yeah, he... Mazzoli is, and is a combination that they want to. They, they already tried that. So maybe uh, three last names are Drew Brown. Drew Brown, but I don't think he can tutel uh, under the tutelage uh, of a young quarterback. I don't think that's a good thing. Dustin Crum. Yeah, it didn't look very good in, in Hamilton this year, right? But yeah, Condell had a little bit of success a few years ago with Mazzoli as his quarterback. Mazzoli sounds like he's still coming back. I don't know how that's going to work out because the guy hasn't been able to stay healthy. But the, yeah, this hiring doesn't move the needle for me at all. And I'm like kind of disappointed in Ottawa for making this hire just because he was not good the last couple of years, right? In Hamilton, that, that offense was pretty stagnant, you know, and yeah. he just got fired halfway through a season, so... There could, there could should have been another option out there. I don't know, but you know, we, we talked about this. So CFL likes their retreads, right? They like to bring guys back um, and guys that haven't even had success, which was, doesn't make sense to me here. That was an interesting, that was an interesting one. Well, talk, <laughs> retreads, Mark Mueller is not a retread. He's going to be the offensive coordinator in Saskatchewan. Corey Mace is going to be the head coach and keeping the DC uh, tag on himself. Thoughts on that? Is that a good move? I don't mind him being this DC, but when you're hiring a brand new guy, basically at OC. Uh, so Mueller was the OC for a bit in Calgary last year. Is that correct? It sounds like what I was reading today. And then he lost the duty halfway through the season when things weren't going well. So near, it, it, I know the guy's been around for 10 years or whatever as an offensive coach in, in certain capacities, but you're bringing in a brand new OC basically. And I know Trevor Harris is there, so that might help. Uh, because you got a veteran guy there, but I, this yeah. is kind of risky for me because he's a brand new guy. Mace is a brand new head coach. Uh, that's a lot to put on your plate. Do you don't really have a veteran guy there to bounce stuff off with, or just leave the offense to him and you don't have to worry about it. Right. So bit of a risky move. We'll see how this works out, but I don't necessarily like it right off the bat. Yeah, does this have to do with like the coaching cap that he's bringing so many first time coordinators? Like, yeah. cause that is a lot on his plate. Yeah, to to be in the defensive room and still have to worry about the offensive responsibilities, unless he completely trusts Bueller in regards to game planning and you know which he might, and then you might learn that oh that's not a good idea. Like uh, either that or he bring a, a defensive coordinator who knows his system, like Kevin Ivan. Yeah, unless Kevin Ivan's giving the job, been giving the job in Toronto. Yeah, that's the thing. At least you get help on DC job, and then you can actually focus on everything, kind of thing. But yeah, it's, if Mueller was the OC for a bit in Calgary last year and then he lost the job, there was Dickinson there to take over. If it doesn't work for Mueller in Saskatchewan this year, who's taking over at that point, right? Yeah. Um, he's not going to. Mace is not going to. So you're going to have to find someone else from within there. So hopefully some other good hires along there, that offensive uh, side of the ball to help this guy out. Yeah, because like, you look at O'Shea. He never had his special teams coordinator position any time. And just because he concentrated on being a coach and building those relationships and being that kind of leader. So, yeah. Was was Lapo the OC when O'Shea first started? Or did he come? He came in after, right? Who was the OC when O'Shea first started? I can't remember. That's a good question. And who was the DC? It wasn't Richie Hall, right? Or was it? That's, Rich, that's another good question. Because <laughs> I'm trying to think what he did when he first started. Uh you know, and if he had some guys with some experience taking over those roles or whatever, right? So yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure Richie Hall has always been here. Yeah, I feel like he has actually. The OC had to have changed though, because Olapo was still in Saskatchewan around 2013 or whatever, wasn't he? Because 2013 was the year that the uh, no. Why are we struggling when we have Google? Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it absolutely helped uh, Mike O'Shea's development. But who knows? Yeah. Even with a young OC, they have Trevor Harris. That's a yeah. very experienced CFL quarterback who's seen a lot in yes. a lot of situations and has won. Yes. So that, that, that's like, what I said. That's the only uh, positive thing that I could see there 
if they're keeping Harris, which it sounds like they are, at well, least you sure got a guy are. with plenty yeah. of experience that uh, that can help them all, right? So yeah, lots of action going on. Uh, Al's sign Fajardo and Lemon. Uh, who do you think is their next big chip that they need to sign to repeat that Grey Cup, or at least be a contender? Man, I was looking at their their free agency list. Doesn't look too bad for them. Uh, it depends on Sankey. Um, if, I would say he's probably one of the top guys there, but it sounds like he may end up going the same route as last year. Maybe XFL, USFL, whatever it's called now, play there for a bit um, and then come back. Um, looking at it, all the running backs are free agents, but I don't think that's too big of a deal. There's two starting guards were free agents. Uh, for me, I'd probably go linebacker and Tyrese Beverett. If you can get him re-signed, uh, that'll definitely help You know, keep that defense intact. But yeah, they don't have a lot of holes to fill really. Yeah, Beverett was really good. He was even better with Sankey. Yeah. Like yeah. his sack was output off, right? doubled yeah. from like two to five sacks. So yeah, the, him the, they're a good combination together. Logistically, you talked about running backs. I think they should really prioritize signing uh, Jeshurun Antwi. He's a yeah. good Canadian back that could be a racial breaker. Like I'm not saying he's going to be as good as Andrew Harris or as good as uh, Brady Oliver is right now. But he's on that trajectory where his per carry average is almost six. And every time he touches, and he's a great receiving back as well. So I think they should really look at making sure he's on the roster and they don't lose that guy. Because yeah. I don't think Stanback will be there for much longer. And I heard they were talking to Stanback earlier. So maybe they were like, dude, you mind taking a little less money so we can keep this Canadian kid because he's the next one? I wouldn't be surprised if Machocha said that to him. Yeah. Yeah, you almost got to because you got to keep those young Canadians uh, in the fold. Uh, so, yeah, that would be a good move for them for sure. And Sandbeck, he was fine this year, but nothing, you know, nothing to break the budget for or anything like that. And there's so many running backs all over the place, right? So, yeah, he looked great in the Grey Cup. So he did. Good. Yeah, a couple good plays, but yeah, even, you know. Um, Still talking about that Grey Cup? I thought we moved on. Um, emotionally, I've moved on. That's why I can talk about it. It's all good. It doesn't hurt. I'd rather talk about this Grey Cup even more than the Toronto Grey Cup. Oh, jeez. And I'd still rather talk about the Toronto Grey Cup than the 2001 Grey Cup. <laughs> uh, remember Unfinished Business the next year? Oh, good. Please don't do that. 2002, I... they had a great tackle that they brought in, uh, Garrick Jones. And uh, he is heading an initiative for pl- a player ownership group. In the CFL. Wow, yeah. So I think we should talk to that dude one day. Yeah, we should. That'd be a good idea. That'd Maybe be interesting. A um, player's ownership group, eh? Because they know the game. Yeah. They're, they've are they been out in the community. They know the fans. Shoot. Garrick Jones, stay tuned. Let's <laughs> move on to some Winnipeg Jets talk brought to you by Fahrenheit Airbrushing. Stand out on the ice pavement or the field with a custom airbrushed helmet or goalie mask. A local Manitoba business with affordable solutions for any project. Check out Fahrenheit Airbrushing on Facebook or call them at 204-891-7431. Tell them Ray and Benny sent you. I don't know how long I've been doing that ad for, but this week is the first week I've noticed that I've memorized that phone number. No, that's pretty good. I don't memorize it. it. It's been a long time. (laughs) Yeah, but it's hard to memorize phone numbers anymore, man. I don't memorize anybody's number anymore. (laughs) But I must have said it about 20 times by now. Yeah. See, but you know what? You just said it again to me. Like, you've said it every time, and I'm here. I can't even recite it back to you. 204. Yeah. 891. Okay. 7431. Yeah. Ask me later if I remember that. Fahrenheit airbrushing. Check them out on Facebook. Tell them Rain Benny sent you. Quick and dirty. Let's go over the Carolina game review. What are your thoughts on that game? Woo. Thank God for Laurent Boisson playing his best game of the season, right? The Jets are outshot basically two to one almost in that game, but he stepped up. Uh, even the one goal that got in went off of DeMello. Uh, yeah. So great game by him. They But they were terrible defensively, gave him a lot of golden opportunities. Um, and they managed to cash in on a few of their chances. A nice goal by Ehlers. Uh, yep. To basically get the winner, two nothing goal, nice play from Shifley, Connor, and Oof. setting up Ehlers in the right spot. So not the greatest of games for the Jets, but they they got away with one and they they took the two points. Yeah, Jets look good. Roswell looked amazing, and Carolina, as usual this season, had issues putting the puck in the net. Uh, the Jets are undefeated, by the way, against the East. That's pretty good. Wow, seven zero one. Wow, shoo, 
food. Nick Ehlers is making me eat my words, and I love it. I have no problem being wrong with that because, first of all, I'm not an analyst. I'm a fan, and I, I, I want this guy to do good. Historically, I've never bought into Ehlers as a full-time first-line forward. And, and sorry to be negative Nelly, but I still don't think, you know, th- we're going to go through a couple painstaking droughts, I think, through this season still with him. But at the same time, we're hearing about Shifley starting to be a leader on that team. Uh, so you mentioned it last week. Well, this great um, article that was written by Murata Tesh about him tutoring uh, Perfetti. Yeah. So uh, keep proving me wrong, little. Uh, sorry, no, that's not a good nickname. I was supposed to call him Little Nicky. <laughs> that's not bad. You remember that movie with Adam Sandler? Yeah. I remember that movie. Yeah. Hell yeah. He's it's a funny. devil it, of a player. It's yeah. funny because we were kind of ragging on him the last episode about, about playing on that top line and everything. And then he puts in a beauty and he's played well uh, yeah. on that top line and, and kind of fit in. And again, he's always seemed snake bit, right? Like where he's got great opportunities and puck just doesn't go in the net for him. But we've seen a couple goals from him this year, like that game and the game, the goal against Florida. And it's like, the guy's got great mitts, right? It just doesn't always work out for him uh, when he's attempting shots on net. So starting to buy in, but, starting to yeah. buy in. Um, you want to check in on the Colorado game? We have a score on that one. Yeah, I mean, speaking of Ehlers and Connor, uh, it's two one Jets. It was two nothing, uh, and the second goal was scored by Kyle Connor, assisted yeah. by Nikolai Ehlers. So, hey, who scored that Colorado one? <laughs> uh, McKinnon, I believe. Okay. Yes, okay. Nathan McKinnon. So Adam Lowry with the first one for the Jets, uh, fifth of the year. So beauty. The one other thing only... about that first line that when I got to watch the game is they're starting to make these blind passes because they know where dudes are going to be. Yeah. Like Shifley was all the way on the far boards on TV or the far boards that way on the TV, and Connor was coming off the near boards and he hit him with a puck just before the face officer. It was crazy, and he didn't really look at him. No. Shoulder check, and then it's there. Like that's one of the things it's like, well, they're really clicking. And that's, that's one of the reasons why you want to keep those guys together. Like Shifley has been way yes. better defensively this year, way better. Connor still has ways to go sometimes on that, but they know where each other are going to be. So as frustrating as they can be sometimes defensively, offensively, man, having those two together, it's almost hard to break them up. It was like when it was, uh, what was it? Shifley, Wheeler and, and Connor, or was it, or who the heck was that always that third guy? I think it was Connor. Yeah. They're, they, you always kept putting them back together all the time. Right. Oh yeah. 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 Even though they weren't good defensively, but they got goals. They got points. So. Or kind of and Dude, only 13 low- shots against like Colorado's only had 13 shots in half a game so far. So way better defensively so far than they were the other night against uh, Carolina. Heck yeah. Shoot. Do the lowly ducks stand a chance against the Winnipeg jets? Yes. No. Why? Why not? Oh, man. Uh, Of course, you know, they just came off beating Colorado off a back-to-back. Well, Colorado had uh, the Kings in the middle, I think. But it was a back-to-back for the Ducks, and they beat them in a shootout. And they lost by one in the second game. Uh, Also, keep in mind that McCarr was not playing in in both. of Well, he got hurt in the first game, and he didn't play in the second game. Uh, But, man, they were on an eight-game losing streak before that. Yeah, one and they nine. They are in their last not 10. <laughs> good. But I, I do want to watch that kid, that second overall pick behind Bedard, that uh, Leo. Leo Carlson. Yeah, second overall man. If he was playing every game, like he's on load management right now, like NBA load management <laughs> until he's ready for it. But if he was on pace to play the whole season, he'd have sixty-two points and end up with thirty-eight goals. Yeah, that's, that's a crazy. pretty good rookie year, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, that's awesome. So I'm looking forward to seeing him, but I don't think they're going to beat the Jets. Yeah, he's on rookie management, I guess, eh? Um, yeah, Anaheim's got some good young guys at Zegris and all that kind of stuff, right? But, uh, yeah, one in nine in the last ten after starting a freaking amazing, right? Because they were, like, uh, top of the standings almost or close up top three, at least anyways, not ve- not past Vegas, I guess. But, yeah, close games against Colorado. So, yeah, there's a chance. Their power play is actually better than the Jets. Uh, their penalty killing is better than the Jets, but they don't score very much. Uh, only 2.7 goals per game. So the Jets got them there and then they give up way too many goals. So great opportunity for the Jets. The only problem is it could be a letdown game for the Jets after playing Colorado tonight. Um, and depending on what happens in this game, it's always a battle with Colorado. Um, but luckily they don't play yeah. till Sunday. So they got a few days to kind of recover. But yeah, uh, Jets should beat them handily or easily or win the game at least. But yeah, you never know. And it's West Coast. Jets in the West Coast. Do you but it's early, it's just, I think, right? 
don't think it's a West Coast. I don't know. Do you think it's just a Jets thing predominantly, or is it a general sports thing where a team is just plays down to the level of their opponent when they're bad? Because uh, don't they just seem to do that, or just because we're fans and we just notice it more, do you think? Yeah, probably because we follow them more. I, I've noticed this year they haven't as much. Like, they beat Chicago yes. and so all that kind of this. stuff. But so they haven't been that bad this year. But past years, it was like, holy crap, they'd come off a big win against the best team in the league and then play like San Jose, who's terrible, and lose. And it's like, what the heck? Yeah. You know, like, so, yeah. Like, Nashville is understandable. They're not as good, but they're still divisional. They're going to come at you hard. It's Soros, right? You see Soros makes oh, a big difference. Oh, so. man, that guy <laughs> just kicked the Jets' ass. <laughs> Uh, Nito Niederreier signed a new contract, three for four. Is that contract Jets friendly? Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. like steady veteran presence who can play up and down that line. And going down two, three years, it's friendly with guys coming up who are young. So, yeah, I think it's friendly. Yeah, and the Athletic had a market value calculation for him, and their estimate was $6.7 million. Uh I don't know if that was a contract or just kind of what he's worth, right? In, in general. Mm-hmm. So he'll be 34 when the deal's done. So still pretty young. Um, I know he's a big guy and he plays hard every night. So we'll see. But I, th- I think he'll still be fine at that age. The guy's got 14 points in 23 games so far this year. And he's not mm-hmm. even playing top line minutes, right? He's been on that third line. And I know they've been dynamic at times. So I think yeah. I always, he's always consistent. He's one of the few guys where you watch games and it's like he never takes a game off. You know, like he's always given her, he's consistent, his presence on the ice, he's a big guy. So yeah, good signing, another good signing for the Jets. And, uh, you know, it's kind of pushes us, hey, nobody wants to sign in Winnipeg kind of thing, right? Yeah. And I know right off the bat, it's probably hard to get free agents. But once you guys got guys in the building, you can easily sell them on this stuff because they do get treated very well by Chipman and the Jets and True North and all that stuff. So yeah, good to have him back. He's a solid veteran. Yeah. And the grit that he plays with just leads by his play, yeah. not by his words. Uh, teams are apparently interested in Logan Stanley. Should the Jets look to trade a D-man? Yeah, for sure. I mean, if, if someone's offering you something good for Stanley, um, I would take it at this point. Uh, they got a logjam going on there, right, with Chisholm. And then you also got Schmidt that you're not playing uh billy hanel has kind of started skating so who knows when he's going to be ready to come back into it but yeah if you can move one of these guys i would definitely take a look at it there's no point in having this many guys and if you can get even a younger defenseman that you can throw down to the moose and let him develop a little bit or a depth forward because even with kapari out uh now you got uh, i'll never say his name right axel johnson fial yeah you got him in the lineup which i don't know he, he always plays hard uh, but I would like to see maybe a younger guy kind of get in there and, and develop a little bit. Do you think he's in the lineup to show him off for a possible trade? Stanley? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I mean, he's back in there tonight, I believe, against Colorado. So he's played the last couple games, right? Because last game Chisholm's they went... has been playing good. Yeah. Well, last game they had 11 forwards, 7D, but they, I, I believe they went back to 12 and 6 here. So, yeah. But, uh, I mean, if you can get a good deal for him, why not? It's time to maybe let him go play, see if he can sit to, or play somewhat regularly, right? Okay, I'd like, help him too. You gotta explain to me though, what is a good deal? Yeah. Because really, what are you what value are you gonna get for this? What what are you thinking about good deal when you say good deal? What are you thinking? A third uh, rounder? Yeah, I mean, if you can get a third for sure, you're not getting probably anything higher than that. If you can get a young defenseman, uh, a bit younger than Stanley that can go play for the moose and see what he can kind of develop into, uh, or if you get a younger forward, you know, kind of thing, or even a uh older, a bit older forward to get a little bit more depth and experience on there. I don't know, just something, right? But yeah. Jeff picks they're, probably the best. They're not going to get much for that dude. No. Like, what's the benefit of keeping him right now? Because he has one more RFA year, and then you can see if you can move him. And if he gets better this year, then, and he doesn't have arbitration, I don't think, going into the next one either. No, so I don't think so. Is it, you might as well keep him, see if he gets better this year, and then you get to RFA him again next year. And then yeah, if I mean, he's not good, then trade his ass. Yeah. But I mean, for this season, how does that benefit? Yeah, don't give him up for nothing, right? Um, it, it also, a team would have to all kind of overpay or be desperate uh, for maybe for you to even move him, really, I would think, right? Because like you're saying, yeah. there's no benefit to them right now because you never know injuries could happen, right? But uh, what are you going to do when Hanel is back? You're throwing him back down to the moose. I mean, he was ready to play for the Jets this year and probably would have made the team if he didn't get hurt like that. So, Well, he needs a conditioning stint. He, no, he does, time. for sure, yeah. 
I mean, he's probably, sure. I mean, he's, uh, what did bonus say? He's still a ways away anyway. A long right? ways away. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. He, he might not be good until February, like condition wise than everything. Right. Or late yeah. January. So if they trade Stanley, does he lose the RFA status going to next year? That's still valid, right? Yeah. It's all still valid. Yeah. So sure. may, even that's also very attractive to another team. Yeah. So that yeah, might increase sure. his value. Yeah, you got to find a team that loves his size uh, and somewhat grittiness that he puts out every once in a while. He just doesn't do it all the time, right? He's a big guy. He's just not that tough guy every time. He blocks shots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it does. The log. A lot of people yeah. hate the block shots kind of thing because that means you don't have the puck. So, yeah, we'll see. But a lot of people love NHL guys or coaches or front office love the block shots. So, so analytics guys don't. An office guys do. I don't let's guys don't like the block shots. Why no, not? That means they don't have the puck. So that means the other team uh, has the puck, and that's why they're having a block in the shot. They would rather Stanley has the puck or gets the puck back, kind of thing. So, yeah, but as while far as the I, other team has the puck and they take a shot, wouldn't you rather him block the shot? I don't know. I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand the, enough of it. We'd have to get someone to explain that to us, or we'd have to read a little bit more. But I can't I don't do understand analytics. It, so. No. Uh, so then, talking about value for players, let's talk about Schmidt, who's been sitting for a while. What's his contract at? Six six. How about got, that. He's got two years left. I have it up here uh, at six point six. No. Uh, well, he's making five, less than five point five point nine. So. Okay. Well, so do you think they'll get anything for him? Yeah, he's got a year and a half left. Um, You think he's the move to just keep around and let uh, Stanley? I don't know. If you if you can ideally, if you can trade Schmidt instead of Stanley, I would go for that. Yeah, but because of that contract and one more year of it at almost six million, you got some guys you're going to need to sign here soon, right? Um, Yeah, and then you also got Demello. There is it Demello and Dylan that are both free agents. Right. You ideally probably want to keep at least one of those guys. You don't want to lose both of those. Gotta keep Dylan. Gotta keep Dylan. I love that dude, man. I'm a huge fan. Yeah, I like DeMello too, though. So so yeah. If you if you're paying Schmidt six million, you're probably not keeping one of those guys, right? When are they up for free agency? This year. Oh this is their last year. So well, you might have to trade them and then swallow like half. Yeah, that's the thing. You might have to eat some of that, or you're buying him out at the end of the season, right? There's no way he's sticking around. You you have to either you find yeah. a trade partner or you're buying him out at the end of this year. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. International tourney. <laughs> the idea has <laughs> been bounced around with four teams: uh, Canada, U.S., Sweden, Finland. Yeah. Thoughts on that? <laughs> oh, God, I don't. I like think it. it's a gong show. Yeah. Like, are they? And it's an idea to establish to lead up to the road to maybe playing the Olympics. How the international hockey has not secured a, a, a World Cup kind of event in all these years is beyond me. How they let the Canada Cup die and then yeah. grow off of that is absolutely stupid. And now they're starting at ground zero with NHL who might not be participants even in the Olympics with a four-team tournament in the middle of the season? Stupid. Yeah, I totally agree. It's not it's not an international tournament unless you got all the teams in there. I know some of the teams aren't going to be as good as these ones, but you need to have more than than in there. Do a World Cup, do a whatever, uh, yeah. secure the Olympics. Even it's funny because a lot of these younger guys, like McDavid, you you haven't seen them in any type of tournament like that. Besides that, uh, it was the World Cup where they were on the young stars, so you haven't even seen him play for Canada since World Juniors, basically, right? Uh, I don't think he's done any of the world championships or anything like that. So yeah, yeah it's it's kind of terrible that you haven't been able to see the, these guys at that level and you're not growing the NHL around the world by not having these guys out there. So, yeah. The model is there with the world juniors. Yeah. Like have it in Canada every second year, have a lot of them in the northern U.S. market and go to Europe where they're hockey crazy and they'll show up for it. How yeah. hard is that? Not hard at all. <laughs> but it's Gary Bettman in the NHL. <laughs> Probably looking to cash in every which way. And then they're having a draft at that sphere in Vegas next year, which is going to cost them a ton of money just to be held there. So I don't know. Where you the know priorities. what, man? <laughs> they're going to put a team in Alabama before they figure out how to do a World Cup. These <laughs> idiots. I'm not lying to you. You're laughing because <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Benny, you have anything to say to our friends? 
Yeah, before I sign off, it's now 3-1 Winnipeg. Josh Morrissey uh, with a goal. And speaking of, Nita Ryder got an assist on there as well. So There we go. 3-1 late in the second. Winnipeg Jets. Is that what you got to say to our friends? Well, no, and then I'm going to say, you know what? Thanks a lot for listening. Uh, Don't forget, subscribe, follow, uh, check out our social medias, and uh, have a good week. Man, that was a good episode. Yo, check out our Instagram. We got a clip that went to 4 million views. Check out our TikTok. It's crazy. Give us some ideas of what to post because sometimes my mind gets dry and I forget shit. Yeah, and, and we've the... got some exciting interviews coming up in the next couple of weeks too. Should we tell them who now? No, let's surprise it. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Should we... Former from what sport? Ah, in the words... In the famous words of Muhammad Ali, it isn't the mountains ahead to climb that wear you out. It's the pebble in your shoe. Hey, friends and neighbors, don't forget to check us out online on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at Ray Benny Sports. And don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. Leave a like, leave a comment, tell us what you think.